Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Linux Container Introduction. This is also abbreviated as LXC. So Linux containers are really cool things. These are basically forms of lightweight virtualization. So again, when we talk about computers nowadays, when we talk about servers nowadays, the big push is virtualization. Virtualization and cloud computing is the big, 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 big thing. But as I keep trying to tell you guys, when we talk about cloud computing, and even when we talk about virtualization, these are ideas. These are concepts. These are not specific technologies. So there are specific technologies technologies that allow virtualization and cloud computing to happen. It's not just we're going to virtualize, right? We can use ESXi or we can use Hyper-V or we can use Zen or we can use something else. So one of the things that we can use is something called Linux containers. Now Linux containers are really, 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 really cool because they can allow you to do some things that the other standard forms of virtualization can't do. So so basically, when we're normally talking about virtualization, again with ESXi or Zen or Hyper-V, what happens is we create an instance of a server or an instance of a desktop computer. So basically, we create a virtual computer in its entirety. We allocate RAM to it, we allocate hard drive space to it, and then we install the operating system onto that virtual computer, right? So basically, we're just creating, it's kind of like a really sophisticated emulator for just a normal computer. So we're going to, at the end of the day, we interact with it as if it is a normal computer. So we actually have to boot it up. We have to install the operating system onto it. All of that kind of stuff. Well, that causes some issues uh, depending on what you are doing. Because since you're creating the instance of that operating system, the issue is, is whenever that instance is started within the virtual environment, all the resources that have been assigned to it are uh, start being used. So if you assign four gigs of RAM to a virtual server, as soon as that virtual server has started, four gigs of RAM from the hardware will automatically be assigned to that virtual server. So if you have four servers that boot up, they've all been assigned four gigs of RAM. When, once they have started, you are now using 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs of RAM have been allocated to those servers, whether or not they actually need it. Each one of those servers may only be using one gig of RAM currently, but they have been allocated four gigs of RAM, and so that has been pulled from the hardware from the hardware resources. Um, basically the same thing with hard drives. When you create a virtual server, you say how big you want the virtual hard drive to be. Do you want it to be 10 gigs or 50 gigs? As soon as you have created that, that much hard drive space has been allocated for that virtual server. So the issue is, is you have lots and lots and lots of wasted resources because every time that server starts, all of the resources that have been assigned to it are automatically given to it. Those resources can't be given somewhere else. So let's say you have a, a, a hypervisor, you, you have one of these servers, and you have 16 gigs of RAM on it. If you, if you start up, let's say, four, uh, four virtual servers with four gigs of RAM, they will use all of, the, all of the RAM that is currently available, even if each individual server is only using one gig. So basically you boot up these four virtual servers. Right now they're only using one gig each. So they're only actually, need, they only actually need four gigs of RAM. But because the instances that they are in have been given four gigs each, they are actually using 16 gigs of RAM within your virtual environment. So if, if you only have 16 gigs of RAM available and then you try to start up another server, there won't be enough RAM for that other server to start. So one of the problems with normal virtualization is this over allocation. Every single instance of an operating system has to have uh, this, 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 uh, the, these resources allocated to it. Um, and they will, that those resources will be used whether or not the server actually needs it. The other problem with normal virtualization is since we're emulating an entire server, you have things like boot up process. So if you create a virtual server that only does DNS or only does DHCP or only does LAMP and you have to reboot it or restart the services for some reason, you actually have to reboot that entire computer. And going through that boot process takes a lot of time. 
and depending on what environment you are, you're in, a couple of extra seconds really matter. So what virtual containers do is basically you create containers for the services your server will provide, these different virtual servers will provide, but then the underlying uh, hardware resources and kernel is shared from all the containers. So you can have one container here that's the equivalent of a LAMP server. So it has the LAMP, the, the Linux, the Apache, MySQL, PHP software installed. It has the configuration files. It even has an IP address, but it doesn't have the kernel and the RAM directly associated with it. It's down here on the lower level. So you can have a LAMP container here. You can have a DNS container here. You can have a DHCP container here. You can have a file server container here. And within the container, all that is contained are the configuration files. They then all share the underlying RAM, hard drive, and CPU, and all that. Why that makes things a lot better is that they can then share those resources a, a lot more easily. So if this particular container needs a lot of RAM now, and this container over here doesn't need a lot of RAM now, this can use it until it's done using it and then it can stop using it. Basically it's like running services on any kind of server. So that is why these Linux containers are really, really cool and really, really awesome. So when you're thinking about these Linux containers, basically think about it as if they are virtual computers, but that they share all the same RAM, the same kernel, the same hard drive space. So when you create a container, um, basically you install the container, you set it up, you give it the configuration files, but you don't have to worry about RAM allocation, you don't have to worry about hard, uh, hard drive uh, allocation, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, it will just use whatever the underlying uh, server has. So when you go to set this up, uh, basically all you're going to do is you're going to use a Linux operating system such as Ubuntu, so I've been playing around with this on Ubuntu, basically uh, you have your Ubuntu server, you install uh, the LXC, the Linux container software. From there, you create a Linux container. And then once the Linux container is created, you can actually log into it. And then you get a prompt that basically looks like any other uh, Linux client. So you can sit there, and again, once you're in that container, you can change the network configuration files, you can install software in that container, and it's all contained. So the big thing, too, with this container is that each individual container can get its own IP address and its own network configuration. I think this is just a really, really great awesome thing um, because again when we're looking at this virtual environment sometimes standard virtualization has has a lot of problems and this is one of those tools that can make a life a lot easier for you now when you're thinking about the the Linux containers the only drawback with the containers is when you create one of these containers you use a template and right now you can only install or create containers using a Linux operating system. So you can't create a container and have Windows in it. You could have Ubuntu in it, you could have SUSE in it, I think you can have Fedora in it, um, but you wouldn't be able to have something like Windows. So that's one of the things to think about. So basically the idea is you have the underlying, the underlying RAM, the underlying kernel, the underlying uh, hard, hard drive, CPU, all of that is used by all the containers, and then you create these individual containers that then contain whatever server services that you want to run. So they're all, they're complete, they're segregated, they have their own IP addresses, they interact with the rest of the network just like they're their own individual servers, but from the technical standpoint, they're all using uh, the same, same kernel and all that. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this, basically like with all of this stuff, Ubuntu has some really good documentation. If we go over to my uh, computer here, we can see if you go to help.ubuntu.com uh, slash 12.04 slash server guide slash lxc.html, uh, they will give you all the information. So these Linux containers, the abbreviation is lxc, and this gives you everything that you need. So it'll teach you how to, uh, tells you how to install uh, the, the uh, Linux containers, it tells you how to set up files, it tells you all the stuff here. So, uh, so this gives you all the information, but basically, I just think this is a really, 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 really cool thing and is definitely something that you guys should check out. Again, it's just one of those those cool little tools that you can have in your toolkit. It's, it's, it's free, it's open source, so you might as well uh, take a look at it. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. Today's class was Linux Container Introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.